Hi, I'm Sherry Falco. Welcome to the Grace Chronicles. And we have today a guest, Chris, coming to us from Georgia. You go, Jesus, I trust you in this. Then you wait and it's not being fixed. And then you go, hi, Jesus. Are you there? I entered a season in my life that just totally rocked my world in a way that was not pleasant. And I, for the first time in my life, got to a point as to where I was so angry that this situation wasn't being fixed. Because up until that point, Jesus has dealt with and fixed and intervened and everything got better within a reasonable, I'm going to put air quotes because reasonable is uh, subjective, a reasonable amount of time. Well, my situation was not changing and I had very little control over what was going on. And after years of praying and fasting and begging and I mean well, let me just gamut. let me just interrupt you for a second so I mean to our listeners they're like well why so you've been walking with Jesus all these years your whole life you believed he's real and then you come to this one one thing where you're just saying I'm praying I'm waiting I'm you know, where is God in all this? I mean, what, you know, people often ask, you know, why do I have to pray and pray and pray? I mean, what's the deal here? So I know maybe you're going to come to it somewhere, but I mean, this is a question I'm sure our listeners are going, what's the deal? Do you have any answer for that? Well, I, I think it's different for every individual circumstance because we're in that spot. We're all waiting for probably different things based on our expectations, our understanding. And that was my problem. And I didn't realize it at the time. It, like there's, this is a whole story over the course of like 10 years. So what's your problem? If I had to, if you were gonna define it, what is it? I had expectations when the situation started for what God was supposed to do and how it was supposed to work out yes. uh, what i assumed was the process oh so you had got all figured out it wasn't so much that i had got all figured out it was more so my rights oh. i expected god to take care of this situation in a manner of time that I thought it needed to happen. And not only that, to fix the problems that were happening in a way that I thought they needed to be fixed. Okay. And none of that happened. Okay. It was like I had been left in, in this situational jail and I couldn't get out of it even though i desperately wanted to i couldn't get out of it because i wasn't the one causing the challenges i was simply the one around the challenges that had to deal with it okay so and, all right so you're praying you're fasting nothing's happening so then what so then now i'm just angry no <laughs> <laughs> I mean, literally, like, I went through what I thought was normal. You surrender to Jesus and you go, Jesus, I trust you in this. Okay. I'm, I'm doing everything that I know to do. I'm reading scripture. I'm trying to do my best. I am following all the biblical principles. Jesus, where are you? Nothing. And now I'm just getting angry and bitter and resentment. Oh. And I ended up going into this downward spiral where I lost myself. Well, so hang on. So you lost yourself, but did you lose? I just, 
you know, because some people think it's all perfect. Like your faith never wavers. Your belief in the goodness of God never wavers. So I'm just wondering, did your faith ever waver? Did you ever doubt the goodness of God or it was all about you? I mean, no, I, I started to doubt. Okay. And it wasn't that I lost faith because I, I was so sure of who Jesus was. Okay. I just didn't know this version of Jesus that was in this situation. <laughs> like, okay. seriously. And what I discovered over the course of, I don't know, seven of those 10 years is that I had entered this situation with Jesus, my best friend, and God, the loving father who always takes care of me. And this particular situation forced me to decide that Jesus was my Lord. Okay. And there was purpose in what I was going through, even though it was hard. Okay. Okay. So hang on one second. So for our listeners... Because I think a lot of people have heard about Jesus as Savior, right? Jesus came, mm -hmm. died for our sins because we couldn't clean ourselves up. So he, you know, he dies for our sins. We accept him and we go to heaven. But there's not a lot of talk these days about Jesus being Lord. So can mm -hmm. you say something about that? Yeah, and that was part of the journey is I had to literally in this particular situation, I had to stop expecting to get rescued. Okay. I had to stop expecting things to happen in the way I wanted it to happen. And I had to learn to fully surrender into the purposes of Jesus, that didn't make any sense to me, but if he was really my Lord, and I really believed he was the master of the universe, then I had to believe in his character, okay. which was, and I always believed in who he was, but this particular situation forced me to solidify that belief. And I had to choose daily to remember that he was good. Okay. I had to choose daily to remember that he works all things out for good in the end, not in the middle, <laughs> in the end. <laughs> and I had to learn that in Jesus's world, I don't get any rights. I literally have to surrender my rights to him because he knows best. And there was a journey of that. And there was a really dark season in that. And I can share more about that if you want to. Yeah, please, please do. Tell us how, about how long this was. It was, um, gosh, it was probably a three or four year journey. Okay. Um, the situation is still ongoing. It's just I'm much better managing it than I was. Um but in that, the darkest of the season, I got to a point where I was so angry, so bitter, so resentful, so confused, so not understanding this Jesus that I thought loved me, mm. that I would go to bed every night because I had lost myself, because I was exhausted, because I didn't know how to handle what I didn't understand. I would go to bed every night and I would say, Jesus, I'm done. Can you please take me? Like, I'm ready to go to heaven. If you're not going to release me, if you're not going to take me out of this, if you're not going to fix it, I want to come home. And I would go to bed. And I would wake up. And when I was conscious, I would go, really? I'm still here? I was not suicidal. I was exhausted. Okay. I so just wanted it to stop. And you keep using the phrase, I lost myself. Did you mean, do you mean that, that, that angry person that you had become, you didn't recognize that person or what did that you mean? That is correct. Okay. Up until that particular situation, I had spent my whole life being a joyful, carefree, 
take life as it comes. Mm -hmm. I took risks. I had no problem stepping out into the unknown because everything would work out. Like that was my life. But this situation, there was no feeling like this was ever going to work out. There okay. was like, it felt like there was no ending to this situation. And there was no justice. There was, it was unfair. Like just keep using all the synonyms. And I was like feeling all of that. It, was, it, it, it almost seems like, you know, what's going on in the world right now. People are like, well, where is God? Where is this loving God with all this stuff? Your journey seems to be like a, a microcosm of what's actually happening in the news. Um, so, but at some point, so three, four years go by, there's got to be a point at which this shifts. Correct? Yes, it didn't get fixed, but I, <laughs> I was able to recenter. That's, and so that is very powerful. Okay, let's just dwell on that for one second. Because I think people always say, please change my circumstances. Right? Please change my circumstances, God, I need you to change these circumstances, and then everything will be okay. Meanwhile, God is saying, hey, listen, I want to use your circumstances to change you. Exactly. Do you want me to keep going? Yeah, keep going. Because <laughs> we're on this journey with you. We want to know what happens. So there was a day where the situation was going on, and I responded in an explosive way <laughs> that's so scared me that I knew once that situation had ended, I needed help. Like I, I, that was the moment that was the change for me where I had so lost myself mm. that I didn't even recognize what I had done in that moment. Mm. And I remember racing up to my office, closing the door and going, who is this woman? Mm -hmm. And I just cried. Where did I go? Yeah. And I reached out to some friends because the Lord has always put people in my life that are like, I'll nickname them battle buddies. Like they are with me through thick and thin. Yeah. I, they, if things are going on in my life, I just, they sit around me. They help me. They give me godly truth. They don't pat my hand and give me sympathy. They give me truth. Okay. And I needed those people. And one of those, one of those ladies said to me, Chris, I really think you need to go to celebrate recovery. And I'm like, I am not an alcoholic. Like there yes. I am not a, like there was nothing addictive around what was going on with me. Yeah. And she said, Chris, celebrate recovery is for baggage. Like you mm. are obviously in a place where all of your baggage has so overwhelmed you that you no longer can be who you God wants you to be. And I was like, mm, all right, fine. Like, whatever. So I looked around and Celebrate Recovery is actually, I found out, is across the world. There are chapters all over the place. There happened to be one. Now, you know, love God. There happened to be one the next night, five miles from my home at a church in the area. And so I went and it was like the moment I stepped into that environment, I felt the Lord say, this is your community. This is where you're going to heal. Well, do you think, so it's so interesting that it would be suggested that you go to a place that's literally considered for addiction, right? Some uh, addiction, but I'm just wondering if it, you know, has to do with the place where, because we always think the problem is somewhere else. Like, okay, it sort of ties into what we were talking about before is, the problem is in my circumstance. The problem is with this person that's doing something to me. And literally your healing comes when you're like, the problem is with me. 
Do you think that that's, you know, part of what, I mean, you were there with a group of people who have been humbled to the point where I have a problem and I need help and you're there and that's sort of the, you know, what's bringing you guys together. Do you think that's part of the healing or not? I think it's not so much who the problem is. I think it's more so how are you responding and from what source are you responding? Okay. Can you be a little clearer about that? Yeah. Um, so in my situation, I couldn't fix, I couldn't change anything. However, I could re choose to respond in a way that did not make it worse. And I could choose to get sourced through the peace that passes all understanding. And somewhere along the way, I had lost that connection. Okay. And I needed to recenter. I needed to get back to who I was. Okay. Because who I was was connected. And who I was. Well, I can't even say that. Now, let me rephrase. Okay. I came out of that situation a much stronger much deeper and much more capable woman through Christ. Okay. Before that, I think I only had, it's like levels, okay? You get to a point in your faith where everything is ticking, everything is going fine, and, you, and you're just at a place that you know and understand. And then when you're kicked into the abyss, you don't know what you need until you get there. Okay. And if you are not capable of walking through that abyss, you need to double down and remember who Jesus is. And as I was being kicked into this abyss, I lost. And I don't think I understood who Jesus really was until I got there. And that abyss became the blessing. Okay. That's and very profound. That, <laughs> and, and from that abyss, I emerged a radically stronger woman of God. But, and I say to this, if I could go back 10 years and start this process again, would I? Yes. And the reason I say yes is because the fruit is worth it. I, I would never want to go through all of that pain and all of that stuff. Yeah. But without the pain, I wouldn't have the fruit. And I love the fruit. Okay. So does that make sense? That makes a lot of sense. And so, I mean, it says in scripture, right, that God works all things together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose to form Christ likeness in us. And I think there's really no better way to learn how to love, right? I mean, I hate to even say this, but there's, you learn to love in the valley. You learn to trust in the valley. Faith is worth nothing on the mountaintop because what do I need faith from on the mountaintop? So all right, so you're in Celebrate Recovery, okay? You've entered into a place where there are people like you. So what happens then? Well, I ended up going through the 12-step program, which Celebrate Recovery, if you're not familiar, they have a weekly meeting, which is public. Anybody can show up. In these weekly meetings, there's a testimony one week. There's a uh, teaching another week. And the testimonies are the people who have gone through the 12-step program. They're on the other side of their healing journey, and they're giving testimony of what Jesus did through it. Okay. So every week, I would go to CR, and it would fill me up and give me what I needed to continue my journey through the abyss. And then I started the 12-step program. And that gave me the structure along with a small group environment to process through my and all of the pain, all of the challenges, all of the issues that I had been experiencing, which got me into Celebrate Recovery. Okay. And part of the 12-step process is going through and actually writing down 
every pain that you've ever experienced in your life and then looking at it objectively going, what's my part? What was somebody else's part? Mm. And you have to go through and actually objectively look, how did I contribute to this? Mm. Which was good. Well, instead of just blaming, of my... blaming other people, right, all the time, which we're very good at doing. Yeah. Exactly. And it was really good because in this situation, I could honestly say I'm not responsible for what happened, but I am responsible for how I responded. Yeah. And when I got done with that program, I gave my testimony because then I got to be a testimony person, yeah. which was great. And then shortly after that testimony, the Lord invited me out on an adventure with him. And this is a whole story in itself, which we don't, I'm sure, have time for how this happened. But he invited me out on an adventure with him to pack up everything that I owned, get in the car and go, but he wouldn't tell me where. <laughs> and a lot of things happened before that. And I had no idea that the Lord was pruning me and strengthening me to say yes to this adventure. But now I can reflect back and go, oh, that happened to help me say yes to this. That happened to help me say yes to this. And I didn't say yes for a little while because it just seemed crazy that God would say, hey, I just want you to pack up and go and I'm not going to tell you where. Just get in your car and go. I'll and I you. think you're, didn't your friends think you were a bit... <laughs> yes. Some of my friends were like, oh, that's amazing. Like, I've got a wide group of friends. I've yeah. got friends who are like radical faith people, like Jesus said it, just go, it'll work out. Yeah. And then I've got other people in my life who are like, what are you crazy? Like, <laughs> this problem, be concerned about this, you should be afraid that you should, yeah. that's crazy, you shouldn't do that. Yeah. So I had the gamut of responses. But the people that counted, yeah. in my life supported me even if they didn't get it and were concerned yeah and so i got in that car and i left and it ended up being a fourteen thousand mile adventure across the united states where jesus told me where to go and i got to be a light everywhere that i went and I learned a whole bunch along the way about who Jesus is and that he really is the provider because I left with very little money and I didn't know where I was going to sleep and I didn't know where I was going to eat. And that entire three and a half, four month journey, Jesus took care of me and provided all of that. So I came back from that journey radically different, which then reinforced everything that I had gone through the healing phase of the celebrate recovery. So I, it was just like, I ended up radically a different woman. And I was already pretty extravagant before this whole thing happened. Yeah. So God just took a foundation and built on it. If that makes sense. Well, I think we forget that God is a person. And that as a person, now I feel like I'm going to cry, that our relationship is real, that it's dynamic. It's like when we have a friend, you know, and you go through something with a friend, even if you are angry with that friend at certain points, I have, I have a friendship like this that is so solid. But when we go through something that's really very difficult, on the other side, we're closer because we understand each other better. And I think, you know, we forget, it's not just that we say this sinner's prayer, and there's nothing wrong with the sinner's prayer, right? Um, but we forget that it's a dynamic relationship that grows over our lifetime with Jesus, that he is someone who can be known. And that there's always more to know, because after all, he's God. I mean, how can we say that we know everything there is to know about God? So if you had to put it into words, and I know it's probably not easy, but what did you learn about Jesus during this whole, first of all, the whole first leg of it and to celebrate recovery? And then you go on this wild trip where you have to trust him completely to provide. What did you learn about him? 
that you didn't know before? I think believers in general, they read the Bible, they go to Sunday school, like they do all the right things and they learn who this Jesus is. And they accept that Jesus saves them, like you said. But unless you are engaging with him, unless you are listening and having like what you're calling a dynamic relationship with him, it's, it's like surface. It doesn't become real and it doesn't become authentic until you are actively participating in that relationship like you would any other human. And when I, after Celebrate Recovery, when I started really taking my faith to the next level of engaging, listening, doing, taking more faith risks than I had before and seeing the fruit of all of that, the relationship shifted into this alive interaction rather than this um, it's okay just say it like it is it. <laughs> well it's like okay so in human terms we've got friends like all kinds of friends some are acquaintances some you you tell your your deepest darkest things to yeah. others are just around right and jesus was my deepest darkest friend okay he was he was the one i went to bared my soul always but there's a difference between burying your soul and trusting and remaining connected and abiding in the lord peace of who jesus is and that was the shift for me that i mentioned earlier it was when i started thinking about jesus as my king that I don't have to like everything, I don't have to understand everything, but I do have to believe that what I'm doing today matters. How I respond today matters. How I love today matters. It made all the difference. And not only that, what this journey helped me do is understand that my life is really temporary like i know that i know that i know now whereas i think i knew it intellectually back then but i know it now that i'm going to a better place and so it doesn't matter if i die today it doesn't matter if i step out into a situation where jesus has told me to go and my life is at risk or if I step into a situation that is completely unfair, but Jesus asked me to sit there and be there as his representative, my life is temporary. I can do that for Jesus. And it's not easy. But the willingness to endure the pain for Jesus, my Lord, is now more of a reality than it was before. And that's, that was part of the shift. I love this because it actually, it speaks to so much of what's going on because people are like, well, where is the God of justice? Where is the God of love? And I just think we don't have a very good understanding. See, human justice says somebody gets what they deserve. <laughs> and here comes the rub, right? Because Jesus is like, well, that's not my justice, right? Because it's grace and justice for Jesus. I mean, thank God we don't get what we deserve. And so he took, you know, at the cross, he took everything on himself. He took everything we deserve so we could get everything he deserves. And that's the upside down world of God, where to us, that doesn't make sense. It's like, where's the justice? Well, you know, the justice is I restore things to better than it was. You talked about yourself, right? He didn't restore you to who you were, 
even that person that you lost was permanently lost because there was a better version of Chris in the end, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, no, that's very, very true. I would never want to go back to who I was before because I would lose everything I gained. Yeah. And, and you talk about leading upside down. I actually started a lead upside down podcast a couple of months ago, and it's been super fun <laughs> inviting people to talk about their leading upside down stories because it's been amazing what Jesus has done. And I know we're in the same circles in terms of a lot of people yeah. who are living radically radical faith lives. Our testimonies become lights for others. Yeah. And I think it's so important that when you shift, and that's why I call my company shift, but when you shift into a new level with Jesus, you need to be the testimony for the people behind you. You need to be the story that they can latch on to during their hard times. Because as you were saying, God is the God of justice and grace. In order to see the justice, you really have to see the grace. Because the justice becomes more powerful when there's grace to get there. And so when you sit in a situation that is unfair, you sit in a situation that makes no earthly sense. You sit in a situation and you are believing and trusting that Jesus is going to work it out, but you're in the middle of it. That grace that you show in that situation until it's over makes the justice more powerful. Oh, I love that. That's, and I just want to make clear to our listeners that what Chris is talking about is available to everyone. The invitation into this intimate and increasingly intimate relationship with Jesus Christ excludes no one. And um, all we have to do is say yes. And um, I just think that's very important for all of our listeners to hear is that the invitation to take this journey is open to everyone. No one is beyond this, re this redemption of God. There's no sin so great. There's no life so broken. There's no one so lost that they can't say yes to this invitation to this wonderful friendship and relationship with Jesus. So on that note, Chris, I'm just wondering if you could please pray for our listeners that have heard your story and say, gee, I'd like to go on an adventure like that. I'd like to be changed like that. I'd like to know Jesus like that. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Before I pray, though, I want to remind everybody that if you look at the Bible and you look at all the people who are with Jesus, they came from very different spheres of life and very different levels of what we would call sin. OK, <laughs> and, and sin is sin is sin. But in human terms, we tend to levelize it. Right. <laughs> and if I believe that if Judas had come back to Jesus and thoroughly apologized instead of hanging himself, that Jesus would have forgiven him. Mm. So there is no sin that you can have that is too big for Jesus to forgive you, first of all, for those of you that Thank are you. listening. And secondly, the adventure is a gift. And, and through my adventure, I love helping people with adventures. So if you want help, let me know. Happy to do that. Um, but say yes. You don't know what you're missing if you don't say yes. So I would highly encourage you. I don't care where you are on the I hate God right now and added him to the I love Jesus and I don't get you. Just open up your mouth and say, yes, Jesus, I want to know you better and watch Jesus come through and show you how to do that. Oh, that's perfect. Thank you so much, Chris. All right. Well, now I'll pray. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for the suffering that you have made me walk through. 
I thank you, Lord, for the people that you have placed around me that I held on to during that journey. And Lord, the people that are listening right now, they are at all various stages of life. Some of them are probably in places where things are going okay. Other people feel like they're in hell and they just want to get out. So Lord, meet each person where they are. And if they are ready to say, yes, Lord, I want to take that next step with you. I ask, Lord, right now in Jesus' name, that you give them a sign that you heard them. That you do something that indicates their yes. And Lord, for those that are, aren't willing to say yes, but want to say yes, I ask, Lord, that you just put people around them that can create a place of safety for them to say yes, whatever that looks like. But most importantly, Lord, I just ask that your peace that surrounds, that your peace that passes understanding surround each and every person listening to this message. That even if they don't get it, they feel it. And that becomes the first step towards their yes. And I ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for sharing your story with us, your God story. And I know all you guys listening, I hope this made you hungry for more of God. And I hope those of you that have been afraid to approach him, I hope this gives you courage to say yes. And I just want to thank you guys for listening to this episode of the Grace Chronicles. And if you want to connect with Chris, just reach out to us and we will connect you. And I just, we'll see you next time. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>